Hello and welcome back to VTU eShikshana Learning Platform. In this video, we will discuss regarding wireless LAN physical layer. So, in the last video, we discussed regarding the details regarding IEEE 802.11 project. In that, we discussed regarding a max sub layer. And now, we are going to discuss regarding the physical layer. So, in this video, we will going to discuss regarding six specifications of IEEE 802.11, which operates in a different band, industrial, scientific and medical. We call it as ISM band, which is an unlicensed band and which uses a three different frequency, three ranges of frequency, that is, that is 902 to 90 uh, i mean 928 megahertz second uses 2.4 to 4.8 gigahertz and third one is 5.725 to 5.850 gigahertz so these are the range of frequencies in which these wireless lands are allowed to be operated which are unlicensed band in case if the wireless lan which is designed to operate in a some other band in that case it requires to take a licenses from the country in which it wants to install it every country has its own rule for issuing of those licensed bands so we are going to discuss regarding the physical layers of this 802.11 which will be very clear from this table so we'll start with the first version of 802.11 that we call it as 802.11 simply so it has a different versions in a later versions uh, so the speed the transmission rate okay the transmission speed is increased which is very clearly seen over here okay in the first version uh, the transmission rate was restricted only from 1 to 2 mbps and the higher versions it is increased okay so now latest version is IEEE 802.11 and uh, apart from this some more newer versions are there anyway it is not the part of our discussion we will restrict ourselves to uh, 802.11 11n so the first is 802.11 which uses a technique of FHSS which is also known as a frequency hopping spread spectrum method uh, which we already discussed in one of our videos this particular FHSS uses 2.4 to 5.835 gigahertz ISM band the band is divided into a uh, say 79 Subbands. It is divided into seventy-nine subbands. Each subband is of one megahertz. And apart from that, we also need uh, some some guard bands. A pseudo random number generator selects the frequency hopping sequence here. So FHSS means frequency hopping. So we are not operating using only one frequency here we are operating with the multiple frequency and what frequency to be selected it is done with the help of pseudo random generator the modulation technique uh, is used over here is of the type fsk fsk with two level or fsk with four level okay frequency shift keying technique Okay, this too we have discussed in one of the earlier videos. In the module 2, we have discussed regarding these things. So, frequency shift keying is the technique that is used over here. So, either with a 2 level or 4 level. The band, uh, the say, uh, the transmission rate with FSK is 1 or two bits per baud which results in data rate of 1 mbps to 
two Mbps, which is mentioned over here in this table. Okay. The next technique is the next version of IEEE 802.11, one which uses DSSS, that is Direct Sequence Spread Spectrum Technique. So this too is a kind of a frequency hopping technique. So in this case, the modulation technique used is PSK. Okay, phase shift king. Uh, one megawatts per second. This system allows one to two bits per baud, uh, and uh, that is binary PSK or QPSK, which results in a data rate of one or two Mbps. This too has been mentioned over in the table. Next is IEEE 802.11a. Okay, so which is which uses that OFDM, that is orthogonal frequency division multiplexing scheme. See, in all these cases, the change is what we are seeing to uh, say for the better achievement of data rate is you see this technique we are changing these techniques especially these techniques helps us to achieve the better data rate the change in the technique that orthogonal frequency division multiplexing scheme method for the signal generation of say which is in the range of 5725 for 5.725 to 5.8 gigahertz ism band this too is similar to that frequency division multiplexing with one major difference that is all subbands used with one source at a given time. Sources contend with one another at the data, uh, data link layer for the access. The band is divided into 52 bands and 48 subbands for each sending 48 groups. Of bits at a time and four subbands to control the information. Dividing these subbands into, uh, I mean, dividing these bands into a subbands, say, reduces the effects of interference. If the subbands are used randomly, the security also will going to be a better in this case. This OFDM uses a phase shift keying technique and uh, quadrature amplitude modulation for modulation and the data rate are 18 mbps to 15 54 mbps which is very 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 high compared to the earlier version next is ieee 802.11b again that high rate Direct sequence spread spectrum that is HRDSS. Here we have simply mentioned it as DSSS, but the technique actually uses uh, that as high rate direct sequence spread spectrum that is HRDSSS method for signal generation in the range of 2.4 to 4.835 gigahertz and the this is uh, same as that of IEEE 802.11 DSS except that encoding method. That encoding method used is a complementary code king CCK. CCK technique is used over here. Okay. So the CCK encodes 4 or 8 bits CCK symbol to be backward compatible with DSS, HRDSS. It defines uh, four data rates, 1, 2, or 5.5, .5 or 11 Mbps. So, the 5.5 .5 Mbps version uses BPSK. And uh, 11 Mbps version uses QPSK. Whereas, uh, that, uh, say, Here, the modulation technique used is a standard one. 
द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज आई ट्रिपल ई एट नोट टू पॉइंट इलेवन जी दिस न्यू स्पेसिफिकेशन डिफाइंस दैट फॉरवर्ड एरर करेक्शन यूजिंग ओ एफ डी एम विच रिजल्ट इन अ बेटर डेटा रेट दैट इज ट्वेंटी टू टू फिफ्टी so which is a better compared to the its predecessors next is 802.11 this standard uses mimo that is multiple input multiple output antenna to overcome the noise problems especially in a wireless environment there will be a lot of noise that is countered with the help of mimo technique multiple input multiple output antennas the idea we can use is send multiple output signal to receive multiple input signals we are in a better position and the data rate achieved over here is 600 mbps so apart from this uh, some more newer versions are there which are not the part of our discussion this is all about the physical layer of wireless lan so this is a description regarding wireless lan so we'll end this video here only in the next video we'll going to discuss regarding the bluetooth the details of bluetooth thank you very much